Hey, Armin here. Welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show, where we cover training, nutrition, supplementation strategies, and a whole lot more. So stand by. Hey, and welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show. I'm Armin Eckelbarger. And I'm Frank Mills, and we have another great show for you today. Arm and I, we're going to be talking about how to determine how much muscle mass you can put on naturally and how important is nutrient timing. So, Armin, I'm ready to do another show. You know, the new year is here. Uh, it's pretty exciting, and a lot of people are out there, you know, enhancing their plans, uh, maybe reworking their plans to achieve new goals. But this was a great topic, I thought, on how to determine how much muscle mass that you can put on, and naturally is the key. So yeah. it's quite an interest, quite an interesting topic. Uh, what made you decide on this one? Well, like anything, um, I was just kind of curious um, how how much I could muscle mass I could put on myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how accurate the system that this guy I found would be. And so, because, you know, you do have a genetic potential. You right, can't just right. keep growing and growing and growing unless you're going to take drugs and other uh, enhance, enhancing um, muscle, enhance, muscle enhancing drugs, put it that way. Mm -hmm. And so right. there's a natural potential. And I'm going to say, well, did I ever reach my natural potential based on the stuff that I learned from this guy? Um, because, you know, there's several factors. You're, you're going to be limited to your, your overall genetics and also your hormone levels. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and we always talk about optimizing your hormone levels. Well, optimizing them is to help you get better results and to get that the, the ideal physique that you're looking for. And right. the other reason I did it is because, you know, now you have more natural shows. And so if you're going to compete at a natural level, this is probably a good thing to know if you decide you want to do that. Because then you're going to know, okay, I've reached my based on this my genetic potential so mm -hmm. now i just got to continue to refine my uh, presentation and refine how lean i can get because i know i'm in the hunt because i have put all the muscle on i could based on knowing this now there's mm -hmm. always exceptions to the rule but that was kind of the thing for me is okay well did i ever reach that so yeah so this is kind of based on a lot of factors uh on these actual results that you're getting so actually what what actually factors did you base this on well obviously one of them is going to be your hormone levels because right. you know your hormones are the messengers that tell your body how to operate they're going to be involved with putting on lean muscle tissue uh the right way and, and as much as you can so mm -hmm. that's that's a factor there you're, you're only going to get as big as the hormones will allow you to to do that mm -hmm. then you have your genetic structure you have ectomorphic, endomorphic, mesomorphic. Those things also okay. are a factor because, you know, obviously the mesomorphic grows muscle really well. Uh, they have a little bit easier time with it as long as their hormones are optimized. Then you have nutrition because if you don't maximize nutrition, you're not going to maximize your hormones being balanced. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another factor. Then training. If you, if you don't know how to train the right way to, to develop the body nice and fully with you know, right. all of your, you know, not having to minimize weak points. That's a huge factor. And then recovery. If you don't get to recovery after doing all that hard work, you're, you're not going to get the results you're looking for. And then on top of that, you know, you, supplementation does help because of the demands that you're putting the body through and knowing, mm -hmm. you know, okay, well, someone's going to do naturally. They're going to help that because there are some good ones out there. So that's kind of the thing that people need to keep in mind if, if it's a goal to, you know, develop a really good balanced physique or you to even compete. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'm kind of curious regarding the formula that you were talking about. Uh, who came up with that formula? Well, hang on. His name is kind of unique. It's a uh, Casey, Butt, B -U -T -T. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. but okay. All right. He is a mathematician and is also has a PhD. So, okay. Uh, the things that I read, I, they made a lot of sense to me and, and he's been, he's, this is like, he came up with it yesterday. This has been around for a while, but, uh, it, it was a pretty unique formula. I thought that he had come up with. <clears throat> well, I, I'm sure you did a lot of homework on this, like you normally do. So 
Could you tell us how uh, he determined how to calculate this formula so to make sure it would work, I guess? Yeah, so he did review a lot of other people that were trying to come up with a formula as well. And there, there are mm -hmm. several others. I just liked his based on what I had read, but there are some other people that have similar formulas, but he based it wow. looking at their formulas mm -hmm. and then, then he took it a step further. So what he did is he did an analysis of over 300 natural, you know, bodybuilders and competitive strength athletes. And so he did this from 1947. So this isn't like he just, you know, he, he's taking it from the very beginning okay. to 2010. So he did it. He looked at all these different body types, how big they got and, and, and all the factors involved. And that's how he came up with his formula based on what I read. <clears throat> all right. So to calculate this formula, he's going to need some measurements. So yeah. what kind of measurements are involved with his calculations for this formula? Well, you have your, you, you need your height and he wants that in inches. So like I'm mm -hmm. five foot seven. So that's 67 inches for me. Then he okay. wants to check your ankle circumference. Um, that's hmm. at the smallest point. And this is it's a joint the measurement there. And then okay. your wrist circumference. Um, and then you re hmm. measure that from the uh, styloid <laughs> process, which is the, uh, the bone on your hand here. You just measure right before that to okay. get, the, get that measurement. And it's basically the smallest part of your wrist. Uh, and then you, um, you, you put in a body fat percentage that you feel um you would be at your maximum lean body mass so you can kind of play with that which which i did is on the calculations but that's what you input there uh and then we'll talk about that too <clears throat> hmm. from, from the information that you brought up in the measurements it kind of seems like the bone structure was really important yeah and i i kind of agree with that you know guys with small joints which is what we're talking about that can mm -hmm. put on that have good uh, muscle bellies tend to have a better looking physique and shape so, you know, but as the, as the equation, as it was derived, was collected from the data and then, you know, applies most accurately though, to individual of average uh, balanced structure for their height and their muscle belly length. So that's kind of how he was looking at that, which I think makes sense. Okay. And then like, so you have a, like say a very thin ectomorphic man, you know, which I was pretty I was close to ectomorphic, but I was end up being ectomeso from what I've researched. But that's just a guy that's really skinny, can't put on any weight. You know, it's just hard yeah. to put on weight. So, you know, that's going to have a different percentage breakdown. So, you know, he, he feels like he's within 95, 95% of the lean body mass for, mm -hmm. um, for, for the equation. But then you have the endo uh, mesomorphic, and then they're going to have bigger joints. And so they're going to have you know, wider hips, thicker shoulder structure and torso. Um, you know, so that's, that's another factor there. Uh, obviously they're going to, you know, have more uh, muscle put on, mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, uh, the, the small joints typically are the, are the key here. So if you, if you do have small joints and that's a thing that's going to help you, it doesn't mean you can't do it with the other, but that's what right. I've seen based on all these other bodybuilders and strength athletes. So an example that was thrown out was the um, World Natural Bodybuilding Federation uh, World Champion. Uh, this mm -hmm. guy's name uh, is this Mr. Universe Contest. His name is Rob Hope. And so that was like one of them that they felt fit the mold pretty well. And this guy did look mm -hmm. good. I looked him up and yeah, and uh, you know, he's all natural and I believe he's all natural, but he had, uh, had a great physique. Now it wasn't stellar, right. but I mean, it's a great physique based on that. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm kind of curious here. I'm sure that when you did the research, you know, you kind of thought about doing it for yourself, probably. So after inputting everything, you know, what kind of results did it give you? Well, after you input the uh, the information, you're gonna basically what you're gonna learn is your estimated maximum muscle <laughs> and bulk weight. So you have two weights to, to consider you're okay. going to get their estimated size of different muscle groups so like the neck the chest the arms the forearms the thighs and the calves so that's really what you're going to be inputting to see how you stack up <laughs> gotcha gotcha hmm interesting so um 
I, I was going to kind of assume, I assumed earlier with my statement that you kind of inputted your stats. Is that what happened? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had a so, feeling. I had a feeling. But anyway, so go ahead. Go ahead. So what I did, I inputted, you know, my height, which is 67 mm -hmm. inches, 5 foot 7. My wrist size was 6.5. My ankle was 8.5. And then the body fat, I just, I used 8% because I you typically okay. have a six pack with 8%. You're not, you're not super duper lean, but right. you know, you're pretty lean at 8% because you got abs. So I inputted that. Yeah. All right. So after you got your results, what did you think about what you came up with? All right. So, um, when I inputted the first time I used 8% body fat, like I mentioned before, cause I still have a six pack and. You know, mm -hmm. I'm fairly lean that way. So okay. when I inputted everything like we talked about, my estimated maximum muscle weight based on that was 175.3 pounds. Okay. And my estimated bulked weight would be 182.3. So if I was a little, little heavier, you know, a little bit more body fat. With that came back the measurements and the measurements, my neck come in at 15.7. My neck's been about as close has been in, in the 17 range over the years. So I did pretty good there. Chest was 44.8. My chest is normally 45. Uh, but this day and age is a little bit less than that. So it's in the 44 mm -hmm. range, which is great. Um, then the arms came in at 16.1. You know, right now they're 17 and a half cold. So, you know, I, and I had them at 17s a long time ago. So did I did really good there. The thighs was 23.9, so they're 24. Um, so I was pretty happy with that. Uh, and then the calves, which I didn't do well, uh, unfortunately. Right. Uh, they came in at 16, and so you know, mine are 14 and a half. Um, that's not pump, that's cold. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, la I'm lagging there, but it is a really weak muscle group. And if you'd have seen him before I got started, you'd have known it was, uh, it was going to be an uphill battle. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Now, I, I guess the one thing that I was curious uh, on your calculations, because I'm not sure about this, but I, I was thinking about the measurements. Uh, is there a certain process you use you know, for your measurements? Oh, yeah. So like when you're going to measure, we'll tell you what, let me just tell you what the results were when I. Oh, yeah. Five, yeah. I'm sorry. Percent. Yeah. So 5%, it didn't really change the measurements much, but what it meant was is my estimated maximum weight at 5% was 167.5. Mm -hmm. And then my estimated bulk weight was 174. So I thought that that was pretty accurate. And so far, I feel everything was pretty accurate because when I compete, I normally compete mm -hmm. at welterweight and the welterweight is 165. And you know, I, was, I won that you know, two years in a row. Uh, wow. I, could, I couldn't win the overall to get the pro card. So I had to, you know, keep trying, but that's what I ended up doing. So I thought it's pretty accurate. So then on the procedure to measure, you know, with like the chest, you're going to measure that relaxed. Okay. You're not you know, okay. Breathe, breathe out. So you have your arms at your sides. You okay. Tape under, you're going to tape under the armpits. So that's your chest measure. Oh, okay. Bicep, you're going to flex at the, uh, you know, the largest point. So I'm just going to do a quick demo. You're going to flex mm -hmm. from here to here. Okay. okay. So that's where the, the highest point is, which is, which is fine. Then you have the uh, forearms. You're going to hold your arm out and you're going to measure around the forearm. Just hold mm -hmm. it out the flex. You'll have that flexed as well. Uh, the neck, obviously, is just right below the, right here, right below the Adam's apple. So mm -hmm. that'll be the measurement there. The thighs is going to be, um, you know, midway between the hip and knee so okay. you just find that spot it's, a, it's where the thickest part of your leg really is um and then you have the the calves which is standing relaxed at the largest point so okay kind of a, bum, kind of a bummer for me on that one but you know I'm, <laughs> I'm still working on it all right 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 very interesting um all right so when you got these results how, how accurate did you feel that the results were you know i, I mean were well, you kind of surprised or to me personally, I was, yeah. uh, yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of skeptical, but at the same time, right. as I was reading it and learning about how this guy did all this, did the process and, you know, we'll mm -hmm. give you the website to go to so you can learn for yourself. I think the guy's dead on. I think he's pretty accurate. You know, wow. there's always going to be, there's always going to be exceptions. 
Mm-hmm. But if you're somebody that's thinking about competing and you, and this is where you're at with your height and your weight and mm-hmm. these kind of things, now you have, you have a gauge to say, well, all right, if you got to your potential, you know, mm-hmm. he- as heavy as you can be with muscle, then you know when you compete, you're gonna, you should be in the hunt as long as you've developed your right. muscles nice and evenly and, and got cut the right way. Mm-hmm. So I felt like these were, I just thought it was pretty accurate because the measurements I was kind of surprised by because I didn't know how it was going to come out. But, you know, I came in really close to, in my opinion, close to the measurements that he had put in there based on the weight that I put in and based on the weight I'm at now. Uh, I'm sure everybody is curious uh, what this website is. So do you have that handy where you could offer that to everybody? Yeah, it's going to real simply www.weighttrainer.net. Okay www.weighttrainer.net and then it'll take you to it'll give you a little bit of history about him but it'll take you to the site where there's a link you would click on that and then it takes you to put in your put in your um, measurements your information and it'll input it right out really quickly so you can do it on your phone you can do it at home i mean it's really really handy wow armin a lot of great information uh i'm sure everybody will enjoy starting their new year with a uh, a little bit of testing, maybe, you know, and yeah, see how I this mean, works. Why not? That's see how right. You're doing. That's right. All right. Well, uh, we'll continue on with the show, but we need to take a quick break. Uh, NSP Nutrition, hey, start your new year off right, getting some supplements. You know, make sure you have everything that you need for your New Year's resolutions or for those new goals that you set. Uh, check out nspnutrition.com. We have more. Armin and I will be right back. Hey, and welcome back to the NSP Nutrition Show. I'm Armin Eckelbarger. And I am Frank Mills, and we're going to talk about nutrient timing um, I, as soon as we got the show format done and I'm looking at it, I'm like nutrient timing, nutrient timing. All right, Armin, what does that mean? <laughs> Cause I had no clue. All right. So when it comes to getting better results, you need mm-hmm. to make sure that you have plenty of nutrition in your system. So, cause that's, what's going to help build everything. That's going to help your recovery, make, give you energy. So the nutrient timing basically is trying to figure out the best time of day to uh. have, your, have your foods and then, you know, before training, after training, you know, before bed and this kind of stuff uh, to get the best results for what you're eating and to make sure that you're getting the nutrients um, at the right time so that like when the body needs it, bam, mm-hmm. it's right there and it's good and it's good to go. <clears throat> well, obviously you feel this is pretty important. Uh, why? I'm just curious. Well, if you if you're not paying attention to it, I would highly recommend that you do that because mm-hmm. I've been training for a long time, and in my opinion, and probably a lot of other people, it makes a difference. And I even do this for my clients. And when I outline everything, I outline what to do hour by hour. You know, what supplements to take, and mm-hmm. then you know a, a rough estimate of what foods to eat based on their preferences and getting the right amount of protein and fats and things like that. Mm-hmm. So if you want to get optimal recovery, uh, it's, it's just going to really help you. Cause if you take and train real hard and don't eat anything for an hour or two after you train, I could promise you, you're going to notice a difference. You're going to be more sore. You're going to be more run down. You're not going to feel as good. So that's why it's important mm-hmm. to have some <clears throat> protein and if you're pretty lean then have have some high glycemic carbs to get a little bit of insulin to push that push that uh, protein and those nutrients into the cells now if you're not so lean then you may not want to do that but that's one thing that i make sure my clients do if if they're uh you know if they fit that category and then you're going to notice a better strength Mm -hmm. because you know if you have the nutrients there when you need it the body's gonna have the glucose as it needs it and the protein that's going to help it's going to definitely going to help your energy you need to have energy to get stuff mm-hmm. done, you know, pure and simple. And like I mentioned before, the insulin, you want that to kind of happen to use that effectively. Mm-hmm. If you're doing a lot of carbs every, you know, every two or three hours, like a lot of people doing these six meals and this kind of stuff, you're going to, over time, in my opinion, based on work with a lot of people, 
if you eat a lot of carbs as your main source of energy, you're going to start dealing with insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about that for your long-term plans and to, to get a better result. You don't have to do the carbs all the time to help. And it, you know, carbs don't build muscle. Okay. They can right, help, right. but they don't build muscle. They're not the, the thing that's going to do that. So getting the overall results, I think nutrient chiming is just going to help you a lot quicker, faster, and better. Well, I'm sure after doing the research on all this stuff, like you always do, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time, but you came up with some key factors, I'm sure. Are, are there some of uh, the key factors that everyone should consider? Oh, absolutely. Um, so, you know, if you, you got to look at your work, what kind of work you do. Mm -hmm. You have a hard laborious job or you're going to do a night shift like a nurse you know, that's going to take some timing because if you, for example, like my brother's a nurse and if, and he had to do the, the late night shift from like 11 right. to, I don't know, two o'clock or you know, 11 to whatever the, the shift is, but mm -hmm. it's all throughout the night. If you eat carbohydrates, you get too many of those, you're going to get drowsy. So that's something to keep in mind just for the work schedule. And also, you know, you can't eat consistently a lot of times, so you need to figure out how to work around that challenging schedule. So work mm -hmm. is always a key factor. Uh, and so that's why I like just doing three meals and then supplement with like amino acids or beef liver caps and things like that, which are easy to do. All you need, all you need is some water and you've got those amino acids in there to help with that repair process and the recovery process. Mm -hmm. So that's one work and then your lifestyle. You know, if you have a very active lifestyle, you need to make sure you get enough nutrition in to, to accommodate that. And so using fats is a lot easier to do that because you can take, you know, fats last four to six hours mm -hmm. versus carbohydrates are one to two. So if you use fats and you got your protein in, available, you're going to prevent a lot of muscle loss. So that's that's a good thing there. And you're going to have good, stable energy. And I think mm -hmm. that's what people also want to look for. So lifestyle is definitely one there because you, know, you got a lot of stuff going on throughout the day. You know, if you're going to, if you're somebody that travels, you know, that's another, another issue. Then you have consistency. You need to get things consistent so your body can be, can recognize, okay, we're going to be getting fed here. We're going to be getting what we need because that helps get things uh, more homeostasis wise. And that's what the body likes. It likes not have a lot of stress on mm -hmm. periods. So then with that, uh, you know, getting the sleep for the recovery part. So let the, the hormones do their work. So that's another thing too. Um, and then food availability. That's always a challenge because if you're traveling or if the work you have, you can't have any food with you and you got to make arrangements. You have mm -hmm. to think through what are you going to do there to make sure you're getting the nutrients you need so that you get the results you're looking for and you're making your gains. Then on top of that is insulin. You want to use insulin the right way to help push the nutrients into the cells uh, effectively so that mm -hmm. you are getting the maximum recovery and prevent insulin resistance over time by doing too many carbohydrates and sugars. Kind of a long minute yeah. one there. Sorry. No, no, it's a lot of great information. Uh, I guess while I was listening to you, I, the, the main thing that I kept going back to was, you know, there's a lot of nutrition plans out there and I'm sure a lot of people have tried a lot of different things, but I've seen some of the nutrition plans five times a day. You eat six times a day. Um, you know, for me, I, I don't have the time during the day to eat that many times and it's very yeah. difficult. Uh, just curious, how many times a day should somebody eat to get optimal results? All right, so that's going to be kind of a moving target, but at the same time, <laughs> okay. I've done them all. I've done six meals a day, and, you know, you know, or more. Uh, I've done three meals a day, and at at the end of the day, you you've got to find the sweet spot that works for you. Mm -hmm. And so, for me and my clients, I typically going to have three full meals, especially if they're training really hard. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, you want to space like four to six hours is your maximum time between meals so that you, mm -hmm. again, as the body's needing it, you have energy there. That's why fats are just a great energy source, along with having the protein to help have the amino acids to help continue the repair process. Okay. So three regular meals, and then again, you can space those accordingly based on your schedule. And then in between like breakfast and lunch, that's when I'll do amino acids or some beef liver capsules to give me a little additional protein. All I need is some water to kick them down. NSB has great solutions for that. 
They got mm, the beef yeah. liver caps and they got the amino acids. Then between my lunch and dinner, I'll have some more, uh, either beef liver capsules or amino acids. And if you want something a little bit further, you could do that before you work out with uh, you know, the amino acids or branch chain amino acids to, again, you know, help help the body uh, reduce the amount of damage when you're training because you have the amino acids in the system. It helps with the recovery. So mm. that's one of the easiest ways to me, and that's what I do for my clients, and I see much better results doing it that way. So, again, you're going to be timing these things, but you should notice a pretty good energy effect. Your strength should continue to improve. As long as you're getting enough sleep, this should all work really well for what you're trying to accomplish with your nutrition. Interesting. Now, a lot of people ask about before and after you train, and you brought that up earlier in the show. Um, how often or your actual timing on before and after you train? I mean, do you have some information there? Yeah, you're and again, you're going to get a lot of viewpoints, okay, mm -hmm. which is fine. You could experiment for yourself. But what I found works well for me and my clients is I don't want to eat food two hours before I train. Now, currently, I train in the morning. So I'm going to be training on an empty stomach, basically fasted, which is fine. There's not nothing wrong with that. So I'll have a good meal the night before, so I have plenty of energy. So if I do some carbohydrates, I'll do that the night before with, again, the high glycemic carbs to get the insulin, you know, insulin to come up and push those nutrients into cells. But mm -hmm. then that gives me, a, when I do it that way, then I get a serotonin release, okay? Then that converts to melatonin, so I, I get drowsy enough to get a good night's sleep. So it helps prep me for the sleep. But then mm. I've got the energy there in the morning when I get up. And so all I, all I typically do is some caffeine, you know, some you know, coffee or espresso, something like that. And then, you know, whatever supplements I'm going to take, you know, take the branch chain or the essential amino acids, which is basically the regular amino acids <clears throat> that the NSP mm -hmm. has, take those before I work out and then go. So that, uh, that works really well. And the reason behind that too is I don't want any insulin floating around. I just want the hormones to secrete as I'm training. Uh, so they'll be flowing around and they don't have to compete with the receptor sites uh, with any insulin. So that's mm -hmm. my philosophy on it. Then when I get done, you know, again, I need some more amino acids. So that's when you want to have some protein. And if you're really lean then you or lean, you want to have some carbohydrates, some high mm -hmm. carbohydrates after you train to help speed up the recovery and to provide those amino acids uh, to help with getting the repair process kicked in. Now, one other thing you, that I also like to do is take five grams of leucine which helps reduce any more muscle loss after I've been breaking it down from training. That tends to work pretty well. So I, I recommend that for people too. Now, NSP doesn't have leucine right now. We're, we're working on getting that in, in place down, in the, down the road. But mm -hmm. that's another thing I've been doing for the past year and a half, and I feel that, that works really well. So, again, that's the nutrient timing right there. Interesting. Okay, so one thing that you brought up is before you go to sleep. So I wanted to ask you that. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of, I, I guess, urban legends like don't eat three or five hours before you go to sleep or after eight o'clock or whatever. But what is your approach before you go to bed? I mean, on your timing. So for me, I, I like to give it two hours with no food before I go to bed. That The biggest reason for that is help get the insulin to come back down after your meal because now you're going to be going back into the fat burning zone because that's what you're when you sleep your hormones secrete and they need fats to rebuild cells and this is going to help your fat burning process so you don't want insulin floating around when you when you have that going on so give yourself a couple hours of no food and that's typically going to happen especially if you do high glycemic carbs when it comes up and drops right back down and again that's my viewpoint on it and that's what i do mm -hmm. for my clients so that's how i handle it um but again, you can kind of play with it, but I just, you can go longer and that's fine too. You just make sure you mm -hmm. get good energy uh, on your workouts. Interesting. Okay. You a lot of information. Is there anything else you have to uh, offer just to wrap up? I wanted to say this too, like, since I've been training in the morning, that's how mm -hmm. I do my, the, my nutrient timing. But if you're somebody that trains in the evening, then again, I, I would suggest give yourself a couple of hours, but make sure you have pro, you know, a couple of protein meals before you train. So you got enough amino acids floating in the system to keep your strength levels up. So if you train at four or five in the evening, which is fine, I, I've done that too. It works really well. Then you have, you have your last meal around the, uh, you know, amino acids or whatever you're taking about three o'clock. Mm -hmm. That way you got nothing in your system. There's no insulin floating around. And then you get, you know, when your hormones are secreting, 
you're getting a good response. And then again, you just do the same after you get done training um, with, you know, having the amino acids and stuff that we talked about. So that's what I would say on that. Other than that, um, you know, there are some experts out there that feel that nutrient timing isn't a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. I disagree. Uh, but you know, everybody has an opinion. They have their different things that they do and they, you know, whatever right. studies they want to show. And some of these studies, though, you got to, you really got to dig a little deeper to see what mm -hmm. was on. Okay. But, you know, that is informational. Um, and then this calorie thing, you know, they're all about, well, if you get enough calories, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to say this uh, calories don't build muscle. What builds muscle is protein and fats. Okay. Carbohydrates can help with that to a degree. But that's what builds muscle, protein and fats. Focus on that, and I think I get better response and then time that the right way. So mm -hmm. I, I challenge anybody that just wants to do the calorie thing, you know, see how your recovery is. Because if you're getting a good recovery, you should be stronger. We can get more reps or, you be, or add more weight. And that should mm -hmm. be something that should happen over a period of time pretty gradually. Uh, you know, and I just found it works really well that way. So. That's what I have on that. <laughs> well, a lot of great information. I'm sure everyone appreciates uh, everything you came up with today. And, uh, you know, Armin, thanks again for doing all the hard work on getting these shows prepared. I mean, you offer a lot of great information. Well, looking forward to doing the next one. Um, you know, the thing is, is if you guys have things or other topics that you'd like us to cover, feel free mm -hmm. to input that. That's what we're here for. Uh, again, if we can help you and help some of the people you care about, that's what it's all about. You know, this, this show is meant to help people. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of helping people, there's a lot of great supplements on NSP Nutrition to help you achieve your goals. We talked about the beef liver, amino acids. There's much more there. Uh, so make sure that you check out NSPNutrition.com. And Armin, you touched on you know, the comments and the topics and that kind of thing. We get a lot of feedback, not only on YouTube, but through the viewers, through email, um, mm -hmm. you know, so it's stuff that we want to hear about, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, again, more information is always better than you can. Then you have something you can make a decision with mm -hmm. based on experience and based on input. And because that's what that's what I have to do for myself. I got to gather information and see you know, what I believe is makes sense and things like that. But that's what we're here to do is give you that. So you can at least experiment with it to see if mm -hmm. it helps you. Absolutely. So we will look for your comments or questions, uh, either on the YouTube channel, you can leave it in the comment section, or you can email us at support at nspnutrition.com. And you know, if you really like this show, Armin and I, we've been doing a show, uh, oh my gosh, a, a couple years now called Frank Mills Reality Fitness. If you go to the NSP Nutrition page, there's links for it there. Uh, and also it's available on any of your favorite podcast apps or on YouTube as well. But we appreciate you joining us today and uh, check back next week for another new episode of the NSP Nutrition Show. Hey, thanks for checking out the NSP show. Go to nspnutrition.com where you can find a whole heap of resources to help you achieve stunning definition and eye-popping levels of muscularity. Don't forget you can save 10% on your first order by using the code NSP show at the checkout. Catch you next time.